Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and another video. Today I'm painting three insect themed watercolour bookmarks for Dina Tollefson's Insect Art Challenge. And if you want to know more about this challenge, I'll leave a link to Dina's channel in the card above. Painting bookmarks is not only fun, but a great way for anyone to try out different watercolour techniques and ideas on a smaller scale, without having to worry or commit to a bigger project. So I hope you enjoy the video and maybe get inspired to try some out yourself. All the materials I'm using by the way will be listed in the description box below along with the reference photos from Pixabay. So without further ado, let's get straight into the video. I'm using Archer's cold press paper today in a 7x10 inch block and I've measured out three bookmarks roughly 6 by 15 centimeters in size and I've used washi tape to create a border around each one. It was quite hard to decide which insects to paint as there are so many, but I settled on two more traditional designs with a ladybird and a butterfly, and for the third one I thought I'd paint another bee, and try out the idea I showed you in last week's video, where I added a bit of something different using a black fine liner. I started by painting the backgrounds for the first two designs using the wet on wet technique, so pre-wet my paper first before adding paint. I wanted these backgrounds to be out of focus but bright, and I didn't want to fuss about with them too much either. So I used a larger size 12 brush and quickly painted hookers green onto the wet paper. Here I'm adding in some more concentrated pigment using light sweeping strokes whilst the paper is still damp, to suggest some grass shapes as well. I did the same on the bottom half of this one, but used a more diluted hooker's green this time and mixed in some sap green for the flower stem, all the while painting onto damp paper to achieve nice soft paint edges. Whilst that was drying I moved on to paint the next background. For this one I mixed burnt sienna with burnt umber, and again painted it onto damp paper. When painting wet on wet, I tend to wet one section at a time so the paper doesn't dry out before I've finished, and this gives me time to add and mix further colours onto my backgrounds without worrying about backgrounds and blooms. Here I'm adding in more burnt umber. And at the bottom here I'm just adding some grey to the wet paper that was left over on my palette. For the third bookmark design with the bee where I wanted to add black fine liner later on, I decided not to add a background, but whilst I was waiting for the other two backgrounds to dry completely, I painted a light wash all over the flower to help map out where everything was and give me something to build on. And for this I made up a watery mix of quinacridone magenta and Windsor violet. It's back to the ladybird again now, and with the background dry, I can start to paint the flower. Here I'm using sap green. I apply the paint onto dry paper this time, and paint the petals one at a time, softening out any hard edges with a clean damp brush. To avoid all the petals blending together, I make sure not to paint adjacent petals until the first one has dried. This wet on dry method for painting allows a lot more precision and control in these smaller more detailed areas. Next I turn my attentions onto the ladybird, which is a beautiful orangey red, so I'm starting off with my Winsor & Newton transparent orange and a smaller size 4 brush. I paint around the spots on the ladybird's back and use the reference photo to help me see where I need to go lighter or darker to give the ladybird its shiny 3D look. Whilst that's drying I move on to paint in the pink tops to each of the flower sections. I'm using quinacridone magenta for this, and again make sure not to paint neighbouring areas to avoid the paint mixing together whilst the paper is wet. I soften out my paint edges to get a smooth seamless transition between the pink and green areas. I also start to paint in a bit more detail, 
Here I'm using the negative painting technique to further define this area at the front with some sap green. For the ladybird's head and legs I use really concentrated indigo instead of black and I use the very tip of my brush to carefully paint in the details, making sure to leave the highlight areas free of paint. Here I'm using a more watery mix of the same indigo colour to help give the shiny look I'm after. I use the same watery indigo mix to paint the lighter spot on the top of the ladybird's back, but I want to add another layer of darker orange before I paint the other darker spots. Painting in these darkest values on the ladybird's head though helped me to see that I needed to go a lot darker on some areas of the flower. So I decided to add another layer here first. Here I'm adding more concentrated sap green. So with the dark indigo areas on the head dry, I can now move back and paint another darker orange layer without having to worry about disturbing anything. I start with a mix of transparent orange and Windsor red. And then add in some Windsor violet at the bottom here. And when that's completely dry, I paint in the dark spots using concentrated indigo again, and just enough water on my brush to help the paint flow smoothly across the paper. The last thing I needed to do to finish this one off was to paint in some finishing touches on the plant. I'm painting these with a flicking motion onto dry paper to get fine tapered ends to those spiky leaves. Moving on to the butterfly bookmark next, and for the first layer I mixed a watery blue-grey colour from Burnt Sienna and Ultramarine Blue. I used it to map out the different sections I could see on each wing using the reference photo as a guide, and I painted onto dry paper with a fairly dry brush to try and add some texture to the wings. I also looked at the direction of the line details within each wing to create more of a realistic look. And then I added in some cobalt teal blue at the bottom of each wing, still using quite a dry brush. When this first layer had dried, I could then go and add further layers and more depth to the darker separations of each wing, still using my burnt sienna and ultramarine blue mix. I'm using the very tip of my brush here and paint using short lines to create a more realistic jagged appearance. I use the same technique on the darker spots on each wing here, this time using Winsor & Newton's neutral tint. And it's this same neutral tint that I use to fill in the insect's eye. For the butterfly's head and body, which appears almost fluffy in the reference photo, I was again careful to pay attention to the length and direction of all those little hairs, and how they wrapped around the shape of the body and legs. And I mixed in a bit of cerulean blue to my indigo, painting short strokes onto dry paper with the very tip of my brush. I added more indigo and continued to layer this colour to the darker parts of each wing. And here I'm adding more transparent orange. For the plant, I mix the orange with a bit of the neutral tint to create a purpley brown, which I thought would add a bit of harmony. I'm still using my small size 4 brush here to get round all the details of the butterfly's legs. On the second layer, I also added in a bit of burnt umber to the mix. And that's one of the colours I'd used in the background. 
And speaking of backgrounds, here I'm adding another layer as my watery first layer looked too light. And I really wanted the white edges on each of the wings to stand out. So once everything was dry, I went back with more burnt umber and painted onto dry paper. And dropped in some of my neutral tint mix whilst the paper was still damp. To finish this one off, I also added a light burnt umber glaze on the wings to change up the colour slightly and add a bit of warmth. Now for this third bookmark and possibly my favourite insect, the bee. And having decided not to paint a background, I can get started on that first. I began with concentrated quinacridone gold, to which I added in a bit of burnt umber, letting the colours bleed together on the paper. I let this all dry before painting in the dark black stripes on the bee, and for this I mixed together burnt umber with neutral tint to create a really gorgeous black. I'm painting wet on dry again and using really short strokes with the tip of my brush in the direction of hair growth. I continue this all around the wings, being careful to leave a little bit of separation around the legs. For the wings themselves, I use a mixture of different colours. I start using my blue-grey mix to define the different shapes within each wing. And then I add in some neutral tint and some burnt umber. And I concentrate this especially where the wings meet the bee's body. And to paint the white behind of the bee, I use more blue-grey mix, just to help define it better. With the bee completely dry, I could then start to paint in the flower, and I used the same paint mix as I had in the first layer. So quinacridone magenta and Windsor violet. I used the same techniques as I had for the flower on the first bookmark too, so painting one petal at a time, and not painting petals immediately next to each other to avoid the colours bleeding or blending together. If you do this, you can paint the petals wet on dry or wet on wet, as the paint will only go where the water is. And I did a bit of both on this flower, just to add a bit of variety to my process. Once that first layer was done, I then moved on to paint the stem. And for this, I used sap green. And added in a bit of hooker screen at the top where there was shadow. Next, I needed to paint the second flower on the side here, and for this, I wanted to go a bit looser. So I didn't want to spend hours putting in lots of detail, but equally, I didn't want to draw extra attention to it for looking unfinished, so I did my best to get the balance right. Once I was happy with that, I could go back and add another layer and more detail to the bee's flower. Here I darkened up some of the shadows by adding in some of the sap green to the magenta and violet mix. I used a more concentrated version of this same colour mix to paint the dark stripes running down the centre of each petal. I let that dry and then went on to add another watery glaze of this same colour over some of the petals to add in more depth. To finish the painting part of this bookmark, I decided to then add a bit more sap green and a darker pop of permanent magenta to the bottom part here as I thought it helped to balance it out a bit better and lead your eye in. To finish this one off, I then went in with my black 0.05mm fineliner and gave this bee a little crown. <laughs> 
Before I could call them complete though, I turned to my trusty black and white Prismacolor pencils to add in a few final touches. A few white hairs here. More detail to the antenna here. And a few white tips to the petals here. And with that they were done, and all that's left to do now is to peel off the tape and cut them to size. This was a really fun project and I hope you've enjoyed watching each of the bookmarks come together. Let me know in the comments which is your favourite of the three and I might get the most popular one made into a bookmark for my shop. Which, by the way, is having a big sale at the moment, so I'll leave a link below if you fancy checking it out. Thank you to Dina for another great challenge, and thank you to you guys for watching and for all your support. Take care, have a great weekend, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.